Okay, so just seeing what happens with dual screens on the Orange Pi 5. Uh, and I keep forgetting to mention, but I've only got the basic 4 gig model. Uh, so you can see here I've got USB-C to HDMI. Uh, it's a USB-C adapter that you'd use for a laptop or a phone. And I've also got ordinary HDMI. And uh, both monitors have come on with Android 12, which is unusual for Android to get both monitors come on. Um, and uh, the mouse does exactly the same on both monitors. So actually, all it is is just mirroring uh, the contents of the screen. So uh, nothing that usable unless you really wanted to show a different screen to someone else. And if we have a look at the display here, if I go back to settings and display, scroll down, uh, it does actually list the two screens separately. So we've got HDMI A and DisplayPort. So it's calling the USB-C DisplayPort. Uh, we've got screen zoom and we've got resolution. And you can see it's come up as auto, as standard. Both of these monitors are 1080, so that's fine. Let's try a different OS. So let's shut this down. So let's try uh, my KDE Plasma, which is based on Debian server. So let's switch off, wait for the light to go off, and switch on. Okay, so HDMI monitor comes on first. And the USB-C monitors come on now. Ooh, what are we going to get? Oh. oh, okay, we've got proper dual monitor support. Right, okay, so I'm just going to sign in. I haven't tried this yet. So you can see it's starting up. What's it going to do with the second display? Might be a different wallpaper because I've changed this one. Or might be no wallpaper. Might be just a black screen. So if I right click there, configure wallpaper, and let's put this one on. Just so we can tell them apart. So HDMI seems to be the main monitor, which is fine. Uh, but if I type in, let's go with display, display configuration, which has come up on the other screen. So let's drag that. Oh no, I need to drag it right. I haven't set them up yet. So at the moment, I, the good thing about this is it tells me LG and, uh, well, this is going through a capture device. So that's why it says GC513. Uh, so if I pop that over there uh, and then just hit apply. So now I can drag from left to right. Uh, obviously this will look better if I've got the same display on both. Uh, we know what's going on now. Apply and OK. So yeah, if I call something up, let's see where it comes up. So file manager comes up on this screen now and I could drag it across and say for instance P sensor which I've got installed and let's go with something else. Chromium. So web browser, is that going to appear here? or here, here. And I can use window snapping, uh, oh, I do, although window snapping is a bit weird with dual monitor support. So you can see it will snap to here or it will snap to the middle. But obviously if I try and snap it to this side, it's not gonna happen because it's gonna go across the monitors. But yeah, that's good to see that, uh, and I've got a separate video on this KDE Plasma, how it's been set up. So it's good to see that dual monitor support is working absolutely fine just with a, as I say, a basic USB-C to HDMI adapter. This is a really good adapter. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. The previous one I've had in a lot of my videos, which looks similar to that. This is not one, this is just a USB one. Um, Actually, the resolution or the, the quality of the picture wasn't very good, but this one looks great, uh, even on my uh, 4K TV. So let's shut this down and uh, try something else. So leave and shut down. And shut down. So I've got several memory cards here uh, that I'm using for different OSs on the Orange Pi 5, just sort of flicking between them. Um, a lot of people have said about the NVMe drive. Now, 
I looked at it and uh, obviously the instructions are there and everything, um, but it looks like you can't go back and forth quite so easily. It looks like you have to change something to be able to get it to work. I, I haven't looked fully into it yet because I've been messing around with so many different operating systems and just being able to write them to an SD card. Uh, well, Android is different because you need to use the Windows tool uh, or another tool, but all the Linux uh, versions that I've tried, Ambient and everything else, uh, have all been with Raspberry Pi Imager, so it's very simple, just write it to the card uh, and then boot it up. So let's see what happens with this, let's switch it on. So this is Orange Pi OS, so based on Android, but uh, with a bit more of a desktop environment. And this is the Chinese beta version that I've shown in another video. Uh, and I've also done a video showing how to change the language over to English or any other language you choose. So it's definitely supporting dual monitors, but it looks like it's going to do exactly the same as Android. That's not surprising. Uh, so let's go into settings and have a look and see if we've got anything more for display. HDMI and rotation. Yeah, it does the same. What does screen zoom do then? Okay, so it's just a way of setting up the monitor to fill the screen, it looks like. Um, but it, there's no way of changing that to make it work as a proper dual screen OS. But that is, as I found, exactly the same on Raspberry Pi, uh, where Android just supports one screen. So let's try my favorite OS on the Orange Pi 5, which is Ambien. Now, I don't know how to shut this down. I've got a power button here, so what I generally do is press function and that power button. It does seem to do it but uh, it just reboots, so I just do that and then switch it off. So, that's not me recommending to do that. Uh, let's pop in this card, which has got Ambient on it, and see what happens. Okay, so started up the HDMI monitor. Haven't had a flicker from this one yet, but it is usually a little bit behind. So just log in, but it looks like it's not waking this monitor. So if we try display on this, and see if we can find anything. Detect displays. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to pick it up. So if I unplug it and plug it in again, let's try. Got to be careful not to press the um, the reset button on the Orange Pi 5. Okay, so I plugged it back in again. There's nothing happening on that second monitor. Okay, so this is early days. Um, so we're hoping that that comes in the future because I definitely prefer using this OS, but also really quite like dual monitor support. And we've got enough power on this to, to give us that. So it doesn't detect a display port. Okay, well hopefully we'll get that in the future. Let's see what happens if I just boot up with a display port and no HDMI. So let's shut that down. So I'm gonna unplug the HDMI. Switch off. Wait for the light to go out and switch back on again and see if it sends anything to this monitor. Yeah, it's definitely starting up because I can see uh, the voltage on the Orange Pi, but we don't have any display on there. So Ambien doesn't support the display port at this very early stage. And plugging in the HDMI after it started doesn't seem to wake it up either. Right, so oh, I'm just gonna have to switch that one off. I've unplugged everything from my Orange Pi, uh, apart from I've got an SD card in there because I want to show it with this touchscreen monitor. Uh, so this is uh, a Ymaxit display, which is USB-C. It's got two USB-C sockets, and it generally supports on the go. Uh, it depends which way you wire it in. So if I plug a power supply into here and then switch on, you can see how much power it's using. And then if I get a nice USB-C to C cable and plug that in, and then if I plug it into the display socket, can it take power through that socket? No, it looks like it doesn't. Uh, this could be a configuration thing. So let's try plugging it into this one. So that's taking power from the monitor, but it's not giving a display output because I'm pretty sure that one's the only display output. We'll see what happens. So the monitor and the Orange Pi are only using 2.4 watts, but the display's gone off, hasn't it? 
yeah you can see it's on auto select which would start itself up so just try um, I'm just gonna have to unplug that uh, just try this way around and plug in here I know this works with um, some phones some Android phones Samsung and uh, I've got an honor view 20 as my sort of test Android phone so let's plug that into this one yeah it looks like that's only display port so it's a shame that it can't use the touchscreen and that's just going to boot it up and not give it monitor support. I've still got HDMI out which I can plug into here uh, and I can also go DisplayPort out and uh, into one of the other sockets rather than use it this way but it means that I, I'm powering it differently so let's, let's wire it in the way it should be. Okay, I'm just turning it off and on with an SD card in there running so don't do that at home right so power in so this now should power the monitor from the orange pi but it should also use it as a display port as well hopefully yeah so it's starting up 3.64 so it's using more watts because it knows it's using a display okay so it's doing something weird yeah so it doesn't look like the orange pi can power this monitor some devices can, uh, as I say, phones can. Oh, and it's well, it stayed on now. Uh, so if I drag up, yeah, so touchscreen works because it's going through the USB-C. So all of this uh, is working fine. And all the apps and things. I haven't got any games on this one. Uh, I have tried uh, PS2 and GameCube. I, mean, I need to show that in a separate video. Ah, So this monitor will do this when it's not got enough power. Uh, the other Ymaxit one I used in my Fire video with the Raspberry Pi, that monitor uses less power. This is definitely a brighter monitor and a better monitor, but it needs more power. So I can power it separately. I can just plug a USB-C cable in there and I can get it to work. Um, but the Orange Pi doesn't supply enough from that little USB-C socket to consistently power this monitor. So again, we're going to need separate power supply for the monitor separate power supply for the orange pie let's have a look it's weird how you don't get the option to to pull up uh, when any app is on i'm sure you do on lots of other android versions so if we start the play store is that when it starts to take yeah it's, it starts to take too much power and it toggles it off so i've just plugged a power cable into my main socket and i'm going to power this monitor separately because that's going to mean that the monitor will stay on consistently so it's not relying on the orange pie to provide it with power. And now, again, I'm so used to swiping up to be able to get the apps. Uh, if we pick something, it's not gonna be a lot we can do on this without the internet. Yeah, let's give it some internet. So plug in my ethernet cable. I've got a separate Vonitz Wi-Fi adapter, which is very useful to give Wi-Fi to these orange pies. Uh, so now if I go to YouTube, and let's do a search for my usual video. Lee PSP Video HDR. And touchscreen works absolutely fine on it. Very responsive. And there is sound, although it's a bit quiet at the moment. Well, that's maximum on the monitor, so I need to change it in the OS, which is here. And then... Yes, sound is here. Yes, yeah, so and media volume. So let's turn that up. Uh, you can hear it get louder. Let's go with the multi apps switching. Go back into it and hit play. And it's a bit louder. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.